Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Smoky Mountain <laughs> Stamping with Brandy. Um, I am Brandy Rude. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Strawberry Plains, Tennessee. And I am here to um, show you a few projects and catch you up on things that are happening in Stampin' Up! world. Um, so I know it's getting close to Christmas. I hope everybody is ready. I am not ready. Um, we have Christmas tomorrow evening with my daughter and son-in-law and granddaughter, and I still have gift wrap. So it's like Christmas Eve. I get to do Christmas Eve twice. So um, anyway, glad that you all are here. If you are catching this on replay, I would love for you to let me know where you're watching from and uh, let me know that you're here. If you like the video, be sure to hit those likes and stars and not stars. Um, hearts and thumbs up. Be sure that you follow me on my Facebook page and if you would go over to my YouTube channel. Uh, it's the same Smoky Mountain Stamping with Brandy or Smoky Mountain Stamping um, and subscribe and also click the bell so you'll get notifications whenever I upload new videos. Okay so I'm gonna pull my laptop over here so I can make sure I don't miss anything. Um, but I am glad that you guys are here. I've thankful that you all have been so patient as uh, my Facebook lives have been very sporadic lately. We have lots of crazy things going on in our um, family right now, um, but just like everybody else does, I guess. So um, so my Facebook lives have been a little, uh, a little bit sporadic, we'll say. So um, let's see, I'm trying to think what's been going on um, since the last time I was here. I really can't, I can't think. But um, I did get today, I'm very excited to get my Paper Pumpkin. So we will open that up and take a look at Paper Pumpkin and see what's inside that because that's going to be super cool. I'm really excited about this kit. Just to let you know, if you did not um, get this month's Paper Pumpkin and you are um, smacking yourself because you didn't get it, then let me know because I do have a few extra. And um, I bought them because either they make gift card holders, and I knew that that's something that I would be able to use quite a bit. And so um, I did get several of them. I am looking at our website, and so right now is last chance for our current mini catalog. So that's the um, July to December mini catalog. It's got all the holidays in it. Hey, Angie Bors, good to see you. Good to see several people on here. Let me know that you're here. Um, and so if you really like something in that catalog, now is the time to get it because a lot of things are on sale, and but they're going fast and they are while supplies last only. And so if when you go to search for an item um, from that catalog, if it does not show up, that means it's gone, sorry. Um, but you will get on there and you will see um, the, the sale prices will show up automatically. There is also the clearance rack. Now, a couple weeks ago, Stampin' Up! refreshed the clearance rack, and it was probably the biggest clearance rack refresh that I have ever seen. And there are still quite a few things on the clearance rack. They're still there. So there's some really good deals, especially if you like ribbon and embellishments. There were quite a few of those things there. There's also quite a bit of paper. Now, I'm not sure how much paper is still left. Um, there was a couple packs that I was really wanting to, to get, and I missed out on them. I was, at, I was at work when the clearance rack refreshed, and sometimes you've got to be in there like within 10 minutes and grab those things to catch them while um, the clearance rack is fresh. So um, that's going on. Then, let's see, we've got coming up is going to be the January paper pumpkin. So uh, you'll have until January 10th to subscribe for that. It's going to be a Valentine themed um, uh, kit. And then there's also an add on that makes some really cute little boxes. And so I'll be posting some information about that. And I'll also be sending out emails about that. Um, so if you're not on my email list, make sure you subscribe to that. I will post a link um, so that you can subscribe to my email list and get updates. Um, I just had my um, Chicks and Chocolate card class, and I wanted to show you, if I can find them, the cards that we made at Chicks and Chocolate, because this is also going to be an online card class that I'm going to do, and I will do that probably right after Christmas, and so I'll get on here, I'll show you how to make the cards, and then when you make um, a qualifying purchase, you get the card kit 
for free. And so let me show you. So our first card was this one here. Um, and then we use the big hooray stamp set. So we focused on words. Um, this stamp set does not have um, images in it. It just has words. And so that's the, um, the stamp set that we focused on. And so that was our first card. And if you can see, get up here, it's got, um, we did some embossing and it matches this, this pattern here. And so that was really a really cool little thing that we did. So that was our first card. And then this one was our second card. And we used the Stamparatus to do this effect here. And it's called a stair step effect. And so we stamped these darker ones first. And then we went back and we changed our ink color. And then we did these in between. And they turned out really, it turned out really cute. I'm trying to figure out. I've got my camera my phone situated a little bit different. And so I'm trying to figure out which way do I need to kind of look over here. Um, so anyway, so this is a fun card. And then we used, um, this is the color and contour stamp set. And so we use that, it has a punch. So we were able to just punch those out, color them in, and it worked out really well. And then this was our third card, big hooray. And so we used the um, butterfly. I just had it right over here. Um, let's see, what's it called? Butterfly Brilliance stamp set. That was our background stamp. And then we used um, this big hooray word, and then we stamped, we inked the, the hooray up with pale papaya, and then we took a sponge dauber and came back with Calypso Coral and just um, daubed that on the bottom of that, and that gave us our kind of gradient right there. Super easy card to make, but it was really cute. Everybody really liked these. So those were our chicks and chocolate cards um, this month. And so if you are interested in chicks and chocolate, then you will um, make sure you want to sign up for the email list because that's how I send out information. I do also post it on this Facebook page. And so when it's time to register, which that I will be putting that out very soon, it'll be time to register for January chicks and chocolate. And um, get in there. We had quite, we had some new ladies stamping with us at chicks and chocolate this month. And so that was fun. Um, now the big things that are going on getting ready to happen is the new mini catalog. This is January to April mini catalog. I can't show you the inside, but um, this is the front of it. It's got lots of really pretty things. And we're going to make a project using some of the new uh, paper from that catalog. We also have um, celebration. And so celebration, if you've never um, experienced Stampin' Up! Celebration, that is uh, two months. So it's in January and February. And during that month, every time you purchase at least $50 before tax and shipping, or for every $50 you purchase before tax and shipping, you get to pick something from this celebration catalog. Um, if you are one of my customers and you did not receive this, let me know because I did send those um, straight from Stampin' Up! to my customers who have placed orders this year. Um, it's always possible that I overlooked someone and I did not do it on purpose. But So if you did not get one and you um, would like to, just let me know and I will make sure to get this out to you. Uh, there's lots of designer series paper in this one and it is beautiful paper and I have a feeling that the paper is what's going to sell out first because this paper is gorgeous and I will show you some. Um, actually I'm not going to show you that tonight. We're going to do a whole just a whole Facebook live on just upcoming new items because I don't want to um, take up too much of your time tonight and I do want to show you this cute little gift bag. Um, but we'll just do a whole Facebook Live on the new products and the upcoming celebration and mini catalog. So just wanted to throw that out there. And now I'm going to throw it over on my table. Oh, let's see what else is going on. So let's open up this paper pumpkin kit and see what is in there. I'm going to slide my laptop over. I am using a microphone tonight. So if the sound you think is better than it has been in the past, please let me know. Give me a thumbs up or um, type in a comment there and let me know about the sound. I'm going to go ahead and try to turn this down. And then also I've got, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at Paper Pumpkin. Um, <clears throat> I have a really cute, simple little favor to show you. It's one, um, I'll show you right now. These are some things that I did and these are really easy and it's the Lindor Truffles. And so if you just wanted to have a cute little favor for a Christmas party, um, or have something sitting at your um, at your table, or you want to give you these to your guests as they leave. Um, these would be great. 
great. And I'll show you how to do these. And we can do them. You can do them for any occasion. It doesn't have to be Christmas. Um, but they are super simple. And I'll show you how to make these. <coughs> Excuse me. And then finally, we're going to do this cute little gift bag. And then you'll see it has a little card that hangs right on here. It's a little three by three card that's coordinating. And you just make this cute little hanger and we hang, have the card on there. So a lot of times you have to end up, you know, sticking your card down here in the, in the box and then it gets lost in the tissue paper and all that. So this is the little box we're gonna make. <coughs> Excuse me, got pickle here. All right, so let me switch you down and then we will <coughs> get going, see if I can get my camera. Oi, technology is always so much fun here. <coughs> there we go. Now I need to switch. Let me do a little flipping here. There we go. All right, look at my microphone cord out of the way. And let's see if I can. Something is still in the way there. There we go. That's a little bit better. Slide everything around, get it turned. Okay. So it takes, it takes a minute to get everything just so. Let me back out just a little bit, get my paper in place, and I'm going to tape this paper down so it doesn't move around too much on me, and so I don't get my surface messed up. And of course, my other little piece of tape that I had here to hold in place has gotten stuck on the table. All right, so we're going to take a look at this paper pumpkin, and if you happen to, if you if you're interested in placing an order, uh, that is the link, and that is the host code for this month. When you place a fifty dollar order, you um, will get a free gift from me. So, and that is um, separate from if you place an order that counts for your um, card classes or anything like that. So this is just just for. Um, placing an order online. So this is the this current paper pumpkin. This is the stamp set that comes with it. It says you did it. Good things come in small packages. Cheers to forever for you. Congrats. Special delivery for your special delivery. Oh baby. Happy birthday with love. So this is a really great. This is an all occasion kit and it comes with a garden green stamp and spot. And it comes with a whole spool, a whole bolt of, or spool of the, it looks like gray granite maybe, um, or smoky slate, one of those um, linen threads. Let's see what's in here. If you get paper pumpkin and you want to be surprised, um, come back in about five minutes and we'll have, we'll be done with paper pumpkin and then you can, you won't be um, you, we won't ruin your surprise that way. All right, so my scissors are right here. So this is where your paper pumpkin kit comes. And it, everything in here is, is what you need. When you get your first kit, you also get an acrylic block to use with your stamp set. And you'll keep that acrylic block and you'll use that all the time with, um, with all of your paper pumpkin um, kits. So everything is included. And let's just take a look and see. We're not going to put these together tonight. We're just going to take a look and see what's here. So you get enough to make 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16 packages, uh, gift card holders. Now you know in about um, three or four days, maybe not even that long, uh, there's going to be tons and tons of paper pumpkin alternatives popping up and uh, those will be, they're always great. So these are the little belly bands that go on a card. Everything is pre-scored for you and so you just, you would hear it and then it makes a great little, makes this cute little belly band and that's going to just slide over your box, your boxes when you get them, everything is scored. So all you have to do is just go through, fold everything on the score lines, and there are, there are always videos that show you how to put these together. I'm just going to kind of fold up one just so you can see how they're 
going to work. And you looks like it's not, you don't even have to have any adhesive. Now, if you wanted it to be a little bit more stable, you always could add some adhesive. So you fold these little tabs in and then you're going to fold over and then tuck that tab down there. I probably would go ahead and add a little bit of adhesive. And there we go. And so and you just close it up. And then you would have your belly band to wrap around here. Now this, I don't think this is the one that I would put on it, but it's the first one that was there. And so these are great because they'll just slide right off, but it also keep, it keeps your box closed, but then it's, it will slide on and off easily. And then you have lots of die cut pieces. Let's look at these patterns on this. So you've got, these are double sided. So if you chose to use a different side, you always could do that. So this one, so this has got, this looks, this is a graduation themed one. And then it's, this is neutral stripes. And this one I would say looks kind of like a baby. It's got some little moon and stars and it's that real pretty yellow. So I would kind of think baby for that one. Um, and this is just kind of a, a springy, I would say happy birthday kind of theme. So those are the belly bands. And then you've got your die cut pieces here to stamp your sentiments on. Some more die cut pieces, some little die cut embellishments. And then these would be the tags for the top of the box. Lots of those. And then some other little pieces here. So you've got, um, you've also got full color directions. And these, I will say, over the years, they have really improved these directions. First of all, they used to come black and white, which was really, really difficult. Um, but it shows you where to place your dimensionals. It shows you where to place, if you use glue dots, where to place those. Um, it gives you exactly what pieces you're going to use, shows you what to stamp, um, all of those things. And then, of course, there is a video available. You also get a little roll of tear tape, and this is like super, super skinny tear tape, so that's pretty cool. And that'll help you put these together. So, and then on the back, it always does give you a, um, a couple alternatives also, so you could do them this way. And it does show you all of the pieces that are uh, in the kit, and also gives you the coordinating colors. Um, that are used in the kit. So if you have those ink pads and you could, you know, work on your own alternatives to that. So that is the December Paper Pumpkin. And like I said, if you did not get that and you would like to, I have a few extra. So let me know. That's the one thing about Paper Pumpkin is if you don't subscribe in time, you miss out. So, and I love the box. It's a super cute box. These boxes are great for storage. I've shown this before, but you can always unfold this box. It actually folds up exactly like this little, this little box does. And then you can fold it the other direction. And then you've got this um, brown so you can decorate it if you want to. It makes a great box to ship things in. Or you can uh, use it for storage. I know a lot of teachers that use these for storage in their classrooms for um, lessons, um, interactive games, and things like that. So that is Paper Pumpkin, super fast overview of Paper Pumpkin. Um, let's see here, I've got something on my screen that I need to get rid of. Okay, uh, let me see, I'm just gonna check the comments here real quick. Um, Brenda, you said there's still a few, I think that was about the paper that was on the clearance rack. And, oh great, Angie Bors is using the Paper Pumpkin kit to make gift card holders using Christmas DSP. Awesome, that's a great idea, especially with Christmas coming right up. Okay, so now I wanna show you really quickly how to make these cute little favors. Super easy. And I am actually going to take this one out because I don't have any extra chocolate right now. So I'm going to, we're going to use some new designer series paper and 
gonna see. I'm gonna make a Valentine theme because you know that's the next thing coming up. I was in CVS the other day, and CVS, sure enough, has all of their Valentine stuff out. All right, I need to get a paper cutter. And I need to reach over here and grab a punch real quick and hopefully my uh, <laughs> my tether doesn't get me. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a two inch strip. Let me make sure that, I think it's a little bit more than that. Let me double check. Uh, let's see. Nope, it is two and three eighths. You could do two and a half actually. That'll give you a little extra on either side. Now, when you're doing this, you want to look at your designer series paper and pay attention to your patterns um, and make sure you're cutting your paper up. Oh, and I just cut that wrong. Oh, I had two on the brain, so we're going to cut two and a half inch. That was just practice. Just making sure my blade is sharp. Okay, two and a half inches. There we go. And I never can remember where I scored on this one, so I'm going to have to check my pattern. I think it was five, five something. Let's see, it's five and a quarter, it looks like. Okay, so then we're going to take and we're going to score. Make sure you've got your scoring blade. This is on this trimmer, I have my cutting blade. I took some really, some bright pink. Um, nail polish and just painted over my on my cutting blade so that way if I'm going to score and I accidentally grab this red it kind of startles me and makes me want to go wait a minute am I using the right thing because you know in nature the red means danger all right so we're gonna do five and a quarter and then we're gonna flip it over and do five and a quarter again it's really just the easiest way because you want it to be even and that way you know for sure it's going to be the same on both sides. So this is a 12 inch strip. I don't think I told you that. So we're using 12 by 12 paper, 12 inch strip, cut two and a half, and then you score it at five and a quarter, flip it, score it five and a quarter. Now because of the way this paper goes, when you turn it over, this is going to be the back side because the pattern is going to be going the wrong direction. So this is going to be the front side. Now this side, if I wanted to use this, and this would be good to use with the, let me show you what's in this one. This is the white chocolate uh, Lindor truffles. And so these actually would probably look good inside on this side. So we could do that. And maybe I'll, maybe I will do that one. We'll see. Anyway, we'll see. I don't know. This is all crafting on the fly tonight. So you'll kind of see how my <laughs> crazy process goes sometime. Now this is our uh, triple punch and I'm gonna to totally forget the name of it. So if anybody's watching and you remember the name of this punch, throw it in there in the comments for me. It has a tag corner. Let's see, it would be this way. And then it also has this little decorative corner. And then it has a ribbon, I call it a ribbon hole punch. And so we're gonna use this little decorative corner right here. And the way I did it was I folded up my paper because I need time saving. I don't need to sit there and punch this four times. And then you're going to, and you're going to make sure you're going to do it this way. You're going to always punch on the right side of the paper because that's the way this decorative piece goes. If you punch it the other way, it's going to look really funky. Like if you were to come in this way, it just looks really weird. I tried it. I didn't like it. So, but you, I guess you can do it however you want to. But it's got guides here. And so you're going to push all the way to that side and then push straight, straight up and make sure you're bumping the sides and then press and now you've got that pretty little decorative edge now you're going to flip so that you can do the same thing and so now you've got those that pretty decorative edge and I'm going to keep it together like this and then I'm going to turn and I'm going to get that I'm just going to there's a little line here that's going to kind of give me an idea of the center and I'm just going to eyeball it and make sure I'm pushed up all the way against that edge. Looks like it's in the center. I'm 
push down and now I've got a little slot for my ribbon and that's it that's you know not not too hard all right now I thought my paper was staying still but it's not grab a glue dot we can make this work okay um, so now once you've got that once you've got your strip done the other thing I did was I took um, a glue dot you can also take some seal some stamp and seal and let's see where are the glue dots there is one and you can just put it on the on the bottom of your package and then make sure you've got your pen so this one the pattern doesn't matter well it does kind of look like it's yeah it is going a, a little bit directional I want to do it on this other side I like this other paper so I'm gonna stick with that I like this blue and you just press down so that it's gonna it's gonna stay there okay and then you're just gonna take some ribbon and I am going to grab what am I going to grab? I'm going to grab my iridescent ribbon. And so I did, I put this through the back and then through the front. And then ran it underneath. Now if you wanted to put a little glue dot down here to kind of hold this in place, you totally could do that. And let's see, I always start, I, I like to keep my ribbon on the roll when I'm tying bows because I can, um, I can use a little bit less ribbon when I do that. So I always start with my spool on the right and then I cross it over to the left. That's the way I do it. Um, but that's not the way you have to do it. It's the way it just works for me. So I kind of make sure everything is snug. I don't want to pull it too tight, but I, just want, I do want it to be snug. And then I'm just going to tie a bow. Now this ribbon is a little bit stiffer than some of our other ribbons, so it's, it takes a little more manhandling sometimes. I think anyway. And then just cut the tail. And so there we go. Got that. And let's put the ribbon back. And I'm not going to take the time to do a tag. You guys know how to make tags. But I would just make a tag. I, I used um I used this punch and and just and that was it's super simple. I, there's not a lot of embellishment to this. I added one little rhinestone. And that was it. So, got Valentine's coming up, but this is a cute one. This one doesn't necessarily look so Valentine'sy with the um, the blue hearts and leaves. Hey, mom! Glad you're on here. Okay, so that's just a cute little favor that you can do. And let me see if I can find the, the red one. It went away. Okay, here it is. So this was the red one. I used the red, the milk chocolate Lindor truffles, just so that it kind of matched up a little bit. And those were super easy to make. So there you go. That's again, if you want to put a favor at your table or if you want to give those to your guests as they leave, super easy way to do it. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is to make this gift bag. And this is the bag. And we have a little three by three card to go with it. And we create this little hanger so that it can just hang on the outside of the gift bag. And that's what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna do this using this new designer series paper. This is from the Floral Lane, I think is what it's called, collection. Let me see. I can't show you in the catalog what it looks like. Um, yet because the catalog is not live yet but if you want to see it let me know and I'll make sure you get a catalog but I want to make sure I'm giving you the right name so this is the country floral lane collection 
Now one thing I wanted to tell you about too while I'm getting my paper together, um, I am going to be have, I'm going to have uh, what I'm going to call a bodacious paper party. And what that's going to be is you're, you will get um, one fourth of a pack of all of the designer series paper that is in the new mini catalog, which is this one. I'll leave that sitting there for just a minute so you can just take a look at that and think about all the cool stuff that's in there. Um, let me see, Dandy Designs. I have all of the paper right here and it is gorgeous except I can't find the one pack of paper, of course, that I want. And it looks like it did not come in and I am not very happy about that. Well, dang it. It was a gingham paper and I don't see it. So we're going to use this other paper. Let's go back to the floral lane. So in this floral lane collection, country floral lane collection, one of the things that I like about it is there are two packs of designer series paper that coordinate with this collection. And so let me just show you this paper real quick. Um, that's front and back. And I love these flowers here. And so there's front and back cute little bicycles. Now these kind, this kind of paper is not necessarily the best for creating a bag, but I do like this. I like that paper a lot. Ooh, I love this one too. All right, so that's front and back. And this one, I'll, I'm excited to show you about this one. I really like that. Let me show you the other paper. And then, so this is the one we just used. And so there's the, the front and back on that one. Now, the great thing also about this is that there is a coordinating punch for this paper. And this is it. And so you can, uh, let's see here. I'm just gonna give you, I'm not gonna punch it because I don't wanna punch my paper yet, but you will be able to punch out all of these and one punch with this coordinating punch. And so that's very cool. It saves you so much time. You don't have to stamp all this and color it and stamp in all those different colors. You can, obviously, if you want to do different colors. Um, but we have that coordinating punch. And so that's really cool. All right. So I think I'm going to use, I'm kind of debating between this paper and where was that other one that I liked? And this paper, but I think I really like this paper. So that's what we're going to use. All right. And we only need one piece. And just to remind you, one of the great things about the designer series paper is on the back side, uh, Stampin' Up! puts the name of the paper and all of the coordinating colors are right there. So if you're not sure you're looking at it and you're like, huh, I wonder what that color is. Look on the back here, and it's going to tell you Balmy Blue, Mint Macaron, Mossy Meadow, Petal Pink, and Sweet Sorbet. Now, a lot of times there are other colors in here, too, that you can kind of identify. Like, I think Pale Papaya might go with this, too, um, but it's just not listed on there. Um, I also think there might be a little Pear Pizzazz in there. Um, there's, there's some other colors in there, but those are the main colors. All right, there's my dimensionals for Paper Pumpkin. I need to get that back over there. All right, now this is the stamp set that goes with the Country Floral Lane collection. And it's really cute. So you've got these stamps that you can stamp to go with your punch also. And we'll do a uh, Facebook Live on that because I'm gonna show you how to use the Stamparatus to um, get those set up so you could stamp it all at once and then punch it out. All right, so we need to do some cutting and scoring on this paper. We need a nine by 12 sheet of designer series paper. You should always just check to make sure to see what, which direction your pattern is running. Now this bag, so it's, we're gonna, it's gonna be nine by 12 
and it's going to fold up this way so um, you want to look and see which way if and we're going to fold one edge over and so I want to make sure I get everything lined up the right way so I want this going this direction and I'm going to cut it at nine inches which means I can cut it at three inches also because that's going to leave me with nine inches and that way I don't have to put my arm out. Nine, 10, 11, 12. Yep, that's right. <laughs> Making sure I was doing my math. Shoo, mercy. Okay, so now we've got our nine by three piece of paper. I mean, nine by 12 piece of paper. We're going to do some scoring and I'm going to get my score pal, my, uh, not my score pal, my scoring tool. Um, you can score with the paper trimmer, but when I'm doing bags and things like that, I really prefer to use this scoring tool. And I'm going to grab my take your pick tool and hope, yep, I've got my stylus end on here. Okay, so um, this is my 12 inch side and I'm going to score this at, and when you're using designer series paper, so this, um, just to show you on this tool, you have two ends. You have a very small, fine end, and then you have a bigger end. When you're using designer series paper, you want to use the bigger end because it will do less damage to your paper. The fine end is for thicker paper, and it makes a more, um, it's easier to get a better impression on thick paper. So we're going to score at one inch, and you want to be careful not to press too hard on this paper because it will tear. If you have to go back over it, that's okay, but you just don't want to um, press down too hard and tear it right off the bat. So one inch, five inches, seven inches, and then 11 inches. And so you can see why this is easier because you are just, you can leave your paper still and you can score it. You don't have to slide your paper over like you would on your paper trimmer. Okay, and then we're going to flip it over to the 9 inch side, and then we're going to score at 2 inches and 7 inches. And that is all we need for scoring. And I'm going to grab a bone folder, and I'm going to grab my new bone folder that my friend Brenda, who is um, her team name is Homegrown Stampers. She's in my downline, and she gave this um, to all of her demonstrators on her team and one to me. So I, I love it. It's cute. So I'm going to use that tonight. All right, so this is going to be the outside of our bag, and then this is going to be the trim, the, the, the contrasting. So we're going to fold this way, and I'm just going to go through all, all of my score lines and just kind of those burnish really well. Once you start making bags and boxes, the process becomes so easy because you're going to do pretty much the same thing as you on back for bags and boxes. Boxes you have a little bit more, bags you have a little bit less. That's because one end is always open on a bag, or usually. Anyway, all right. So we've got that now. Our this end. We're folding it over to create a contrast. So you can see that on our sample right there. So you're gonna fold over and you're just gonna really, you're gonna really give this one a good going over. And you're gonna do the same thing on the other end. And then you're going to get some adhesive and I'm gonna just use green glue because it's what's here. I call it green glue. This is our liquid glue, um, but we always call it, everybody calls it green glue. And with this stuff, a little goes a long way. It is super strong and you don't need a ton of it. And you definitely don't want to use so much that it is squeezing out from under your paper because it is a two-way glue. And so it's meant to um, continue to be sticky once it dries. And so that's why you want to be really careful with it. It's a repositional glue. Once it dries, then you can use it as a repositional glue. If you adhere it while it's wet, like this, then it's going to be permanent. And so we're going to go down to this side and do the same thing. And I'm getting ready to sneeze, so don't... <laughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry. I tried to, I tried to block it, but I just it, it hit me pretty fast. 
All right, so I'm just going to kind of keep pressing this. It dries really quickly, and um, but I just want to make sure it gets really good and adhered. Okay, now I'm going to go in and we're going to start making our flaps. And so this is going to be kind of hard to see, but there's little ridges here. And this, we want to take out a little bit of bulk. And so if you will put your scissors so that the bulk is to the inside and then you're just going to cut straight up to that first score line like that and then to get rid of that bulk, well I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing so I'm, again I'm going to put my blade so that my the bulk is towards the inside and I'm just going to cut right up next to that score line up to this score line here now, to get rid of some bulk, I'm going to flip this up and I'm just going to do a little kind of like a miter cut. Just like that. Just it just takes a tiny bit. You don't have to do a bunch. But basically you're you're getting rid of that little um, ridge that's there. So I'm put my my um, scissor blade so that the the mountain is to the left of it or to the inside. And again, this time it's going to be to the right, so the mountain is on the inside either way. Then I just kind of fold up so those are out of the way, and then I just do a little miter cut and take out some bulk. I keep forgetting to look to make sure that everything is still in the picture, so if I'm not, yell at me. Um, okay, got my little trash bin there. Okay. So now we're just going to put our bag together and you're going to, it doesn't matter whatever way you decide to put it back, you just need to make sure you do it the same on both sides. So we're going to fold these in and then it's just going to go together. You want this flap on the inside though. It's going to go together just like that. Okay. And so if you want to, you can put just a little bit of adhesive here and then fold up and I just kind of now because you did that miter cut well no I take it back that's not gonna be there you're gonna get your edges flat there just for ignore me forget I just said that <laughs> I'm working on about I don't know I'd say 12 hours sleep over the last three or four days so I probably shouldn't be teaching anyone anything right now at this point but that's the holiday season, right? Okay. And so this is going to be flushed together here. And now I'm going to put adhesive on these two flaps. And making sure that I, I get some on that edge because that's where it's going to... We don't want that flapping open, flopping open, catching anything. Super thin lines of adhesive. And then just fold it up and then make sure this bottom edge is, is flush. And you just kind of hold it in place for a second. And then do the same thing over here. Now every now and then it's going to be, this is, it's just a little bit off. It happens and I used to get really upset about it and think I had to redo the whole project and now, you know what, it just shows that it's handmade and that I took time to make a gift for somebody. So I don't worry about it anymore. So I encourage you not to worry about it as well. Now, sometimes while I'm doing this, I will take a little bulldog clip and I will just put that there while I'm working on other things just to make sure that this um, stays together really well. But that's the, the main part of the bag and it's adorable. I love this. I love this paper. Very excited about that. So now you have to make a decision. And let me bring our sample back in. So we're gonna make this little hanger. Now you can decide if you want this to blend in. So I would use petal pink paper if I wanted it to blend in, or you could use um, maybe mossy meadow, which is that background green color. And then it's gonna provide a little bit of contrast. It's totally up to you how you decide to do that. I think, um, huh. I think I'm gonna do I think I'm gonna do petal pink 
can just make it a little less. Now here I chose to have it a little bit more contrasting. Um, of course that paper, it's gonna, I think pretty much anything was going to contrast on that paper. So let me grab a scrap of Petal Pink and let's see, here it is. So I've got a scrap out of my scrap drawer and we are going to use our stamp and cut and emboss machine and I've done this this is out of the stitched rectangles I believe and it's I'm not sure which piece it is but anyway you'll just figure out which card now one thing about this is this is not if you take a look um, you know this card's not going to fit through there so I'm going to show you how you can use this piece to adjust it and uh, make a bigger slot. So let's do that. So for this piece, we need a, um, our cardstock to be, let me look at my measurements so I tell you correctly, one and a half by three and three fourths. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the three and three fourths right there and then now on this um, paper trimmer if you come right here to this edge that is one and a half I do that because I like to have my paper up here as much as possible if I were to do one and a half here I've got all this paper that's off of the edge and then I always worry that I might get it a little bit loosey-goosey so I'm going to look for here to cut and this keeps my paper really firm and in place and the other thing that I do is um, I'm cutting up which is also pushing my paper up against this stopper which helps keep it from sliding around too much so just a few little tips for you to think about when you're using your paper trimmer and if you don't have the Stampin' Up! paper trimmer I can't recommend it enough because it does cut it does score um, it does have this arm that pulls out here goes up to 17 inches on this side one thing that I love most about it and I'll just show you this real quick is when you bump your paper up against this edge here it's six inches automatically so if you've got 12 by 12 paper and you're cutting it down to six by sixes then all you have to do you don't even have to think about it you just you just let it hit that and you you cut it and it, you know it's six inches so there's that I love it it's my favorite one of my well my favorite one of my favorite tools we have so many right okay so I could use my mini stamp and cut and emboss if it were in the room so it's it is still outside the room from my card class the other night all right so I've got this let me see if I can come out here a little bit I'm not gonna be able to see you because it's so high but um, we are going to get our base and just to kind of review on this so when you get your stamp and cut and emboss machine you get this base plate and it has diagrams for what you're going to be doing we're using thin dies and so it tells me that I need one base plate I need the number two uh, adapter and then I need two of the number three cutting plates so I put my base plate down I put my number two adapter down and then I grab two of my cutting plates and you can see these are well loved I will say that when they get like this they will transfer some of this texture um, to your die cut pieces so you might want to think about that this one hasn't been used as much um, so I'm gonna put this on the bottom but I do have some new plates I just haven't broken them out yet all right so we are going to make sure you can see this in the in the image here so I'm going to you can see I've got this I have this centered and it's left centered left to right I'm going to give it like do it like this and if you want to if you want it to be up a little bit higher you can do that so that the card sits a little higher I think I'm going to do that just a bit and I've got some craft tape here this is a kind of low tack tape. It's going to hold it in place, but it's not going to tear up my cardstock when I pull it off. That's important. All right, so we're going to cut this piece. 
Now, if you had a, if you have the old word window punch that Stampin' Up used to have, uh, which I do, um, but we don't sell anymore, so I didn't want to show you that. Um, but if you have that old word window punch, you could totally use the word window punch and do this very same technique. All right, so then we're going to just pop this out. So there is the first cut. Now you can always save this for sentiment on a card. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this piece over here and get it about the same. Now what's going to happen is this die is just going to kind of fall into and kind of lock into these stitches here. And that's how you're going to know that you're in the right place. And so now I'm just going to put the tape down here so that it doesn't move around on me. And I'm going to run it right back through. You see how easy that is to crank through. And then I can just pop this out. And I've got a cute little tiny rectangle. I'm not sure what I would do with that. If I had a little stamp that said hi, maybe I could probably get that on there. Um, I do try, tend to keep my little tapes on here so that if I need them, I can grab them. So here's our little hanger piece. Um, and now we can add that to our card. Let me move my plates out of the way. And then we can fold that up and get it back in its home. Okay. So now, so now you can see how that is not quite as um, contrasting. So let's come back down a little bit. See if I can get you lined up. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to add some adhesive to this top. You wanna make sure that you do not put adhesive on the bottom. Um, I, yeah, Brenda, I, it, they're terrible. They are, my cutting plates are just absolutely terrible. Um, and I'm going to, because my, I think my stamp and seal is in my box from my card class, so that I, I'm gonna use a piece of tear tape on this instead of my green glue. Just because I want to make sure that I don't let any of that green glue get, I didn't want it to use out the edges and with that, just such a thin little spot there, there was a good chance of that. So I'm going to use my tear tape. You could use your stamp and seal. That's what I would normally use. All right, I'm going to take my take your pick tool. I have another one somewhere that has a pointy end on it. It was just right there. It left me. Oh, there it is. So. I keep two of them. I keep one with the pointy tip and one with the thing. It, they come with both of them, but I keep two of these so that I don't have to change them out because usually when I'm down here, I am I don't have a lot of time. So pull that up. Remember, we're only putting adhesive at the top. Now, when you go to, I take my bulldog clips off here now. You want to look at your bag. So where you where your seams are, that's going to be the back of your bag. So we're going to just kind of eyeball it, center this up, and I'm gonna put it right up to the edge. Center it as, as close as you can, doesn't have to be perfect. There we go. And just give that a press. I'm gonna turn it over and just take my bone folder and press. I have to lay it there because it's so pretty. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do is make our card. Well, actually, let's go ahead and put our um, our ribbon on here. And I need to grab a hole punch. Hopefully, I can do this. I feel like I have a leash with this microphone. The good thing is, as I'm moving around, hopefully the sound stays pretty good. Grab my hole punch. Okay. Now this is just a regular standard size hole punch that I'm using. And I am going to punch on each side just so that I can get it about the same. I'm going to punch the limit here. I'm just going to eyeball it, hope that it's in the center. 
but because I, I used that little edge back there, I, I know that I'm going to get it the same depth anyway. Okay, so I got that. And let's see, I have not pre-planned my ribbon. Probably should have done that. Let's see what we've got. I did get some ribbon in with my order, but I don't like that. So <laughs> it's the ribbon that coordinates, but it's not uh, my favorite ribbon for that. So we're going to punt and I think that would be okay. I think that's going to work. Now I'm going to not cut my ribbon off yet. I'm going to now, the, now if I had been smart, I would have used a smaller hole punch because I'm going to have to tie a couple knots now that I think about it. Um, and I've slept since I made that last bag and I did the same thing and I didn't remember my error. So I'm just doing a little overhand knot, but as you can tell, you know, one time is not gonna, is not gonna work. So we're gonna pull it back through. We're gonna probably do at least two. And make sure you, when you pull it, it comes back to that same, right on top of that same knot. So you get a good, good size knot. Um, it's still coming through a little bit, so I'm gonna have to do it three times, it looks like. And this is the reason that I didn't cut my ribbon because when you have to do this, it you don't realize how much ribbon it uses. And um, the first time I did it, okay, there we go. The first time I did it, I ended up my ribbon, because I tied so many knots, my ribbon was like this and it was, yeah. <laughs> it did not make a very good bag. So I'm gonna give it a good extra and then cut. So I'm going to pull it straight so I make sure that it's not twisted and then go in and I know that I need to do three. So I'm going to get this pulled in here so I make sure I, I do pull it tight so I can make sure I can look and see. Okay so I've got a twist in there so I'm going to make sure I get that twist out. Okay all right. I feel like this is taking forever so thanks for hanging in there. Let me know how you're liking it. Hit the hearts, hit the thumbs up, smiley faces, laughing faces if you, <laughs> whatever it is. All right, so I'm gonna do three of these and now I've got my little handle for the bag. And on this one, I used two strands of ribbon just because this was um, this kind of organdy ribbon is kind of thin. And so I decided to use two straps. You could totally do that on this one that in there and there we go and so then if you want to come in and just trim off these edges so there's not a whole 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 bunch sorry I keep sliding out of the screen okay so there's our handle oh and I got a twist that's gonna drive me crazy so I'll have to work on that Ugh. You ever had there we go it's probably going to keep twisting on its own regardless of what i do so anyway so now now we just need to make our card and that's going to be we're going to need one more time to cut and we're going to cut a six by three piece of cardstock so let me grab that i'm going to grab um our thick basic white and I'm going to cut it six inches. So remember, I told you about this little bar here. You can do all you have to do is that, and you know you're at six inches. Cut that, and then cut it at three inches. And the great thing about this is when you use when you do a six by or a three by three card, you can get. It looks like we'll get three of them. from one piece of cardstock, yeah. And then you'll have some scraps to do some your sentiments and things like that. So now we're going to come in and we're gonna score at three inches. And then we're going to set that aside. Probably need it again, but. And then just give that a burnish. 
All right, from here, it's whatever you want to do. Um, so we have this scrap piece of designer series paper. This is a three by three card. So if you wanted to cut it down, you could cut it down to two and three fourths by two and three fourths. We'll just show you a couple different ways that you could do this. Two and three fourths, two and three fourths. And so that's gonna give you that right there. Or you could do it this way. I like this one better though. I like that a lot. Um, then you could also, if you wanted to layer this piece, you could do that as well. So then I would do this one an eighth of an inch bigger, which is gonna be two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. And so now, I have, it's going to be a tight layer, which I happen to really like. So there's that. And then we have this. And then we can just put a sentiment on there, and it's good to go. Um, something else we could do is, let's cut this, um, I don't know, let's say we'll do about a, I'll do it on this side, um, three-fourths of an inch, maybe. And that is already at three inches. And so you could just do a little piece here at the bottom and then add something up here. So there's lots of things to do. And I'm gonna do one more piece. I'm gonna cut it at three. And actually I'm gonna cut it at two and seven eighths and two and seven eighths. And then I'm gonna cut it uh, not quite in half. If you've ever been to any of my card classes where I do the quick flip cards, this is how I would do that. So let's move this out of the way. Now I think that's about all the cutting we need to do. So we've got a three by three card. So for a quick flip, you could put this here and then you're gonna flip because you know you've got some coordinating stuff on the back. And then, so this is a miniature version of my quick flip card. All right, so let's do that one because I think it's kind of cool. So I've got my green glue, just gonna give a little squiggle. And so when I'm putting this down, I'm gonna make sure that this side, this side, this side all have about even amount of white showing and then it should be centered now when you're doing the quick flip you just got to make sure you're putting glue on the correct side each time and i did not measure this i just eyeballed about how much i wanted to cut off to to do a flip and so there we go there's that and i'm going to look at my this is the stamp set that comes with it. And let me see. I'm gonna do this one that says, I love that we are friends. I can find it there. There it is. And grab an acrylic block. Oh, that one's not quite big enough. Okay. So pick that one up, and then I'm going to probably just grab, uh, let's see, I'm going to grab one of these scrap pieces of paper. And so we know we've got Petal Pink, Mossy Meadow, so I think I'm going to grab Mossy Meadow. Or I'm going to grab something else since Mossy Meadow is not on the scene. Let's see. Where do, do we use Mossy Meadow? You know what I can do, though? Oh, no. It is here. I just had it turned backwards so I couldn't see the, so I couldn't see the color. All right. So Mossy Meadow. And I do need, because this is a photopolymer stamp, I do need to grab my pierce mat. 
so that I get a really good image. And I think I'm going to center this or put this over towards this direction. Okay, my mossy meadow is a little dry, it looks like. <coughs> Excuse me. I was trying to tell you that I was going to sneeze, but then it was just trying to come out. Let's, let's see here. I think that's good. Yeah, that's better. All right, now I could take my paper trimmer and trim this. But I'm pretty good with freehand um, cutting because I've been doing this for just a little bit, uh, 20 years. <laughs> and when I was, I was telling a friend of mine, um, whenever I first started with Stampin' Up, we did not have paper trimmers. Um, I don't remember when I got my first actual paper cutter. Um, it's just crazy to think about that. Now I'm going to make this with a flag flag end. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut up, I'm going to come in here halfway and I'm just going to cut and then I'm going to cut from corner to the top of that cut and I'm going to flip it over and do the same. There we go. And so that gives me that cute little flag. And then I'm going to use some Stampin' Dimensionals. And I think I'm going to grab, because we have a little bit of silver in this edge ribbon over here, I'm going to grab a little bit of this silver mesh because I love this stuff. This is one of my very favorite things that we have. And so I'm going to, I'm going to do this. Let's see. I have to think about it. Let me grab a glue dot. And I'm going to use my take your pick tool to pick it up. I'm going to reposition this little dimensional. I'm going to probably put two glue dots right here. So this is what I love. This is fun to me. I didn't have this all planned out. I love to just sit and um, play with stuff and figure it out. It doesn't always work out. Um, usually what you see is the, the product of <laughs> a few hours of, of trial and error. And um, But, you know, eventually it all works out. Let's see. I think I'm going to kind of do it this towards this direction. So just kind of put it over that. And then I can come in and just trim it a little bit. And that just gives it a little bit more detail. And I'm just going to kind of put it right over that seam. Right like that. Oops, I forgot to take the back off. <laughs> that would help. Okay, so there's that. And of course, we're not going to be finished until we add some bling. And I'm going to use the champagne rhinestones with this because I think they look really good with this color, these color combinations. I've got a hundred packs in here and at the moment none of them are opened. So let's see if I can find one that's already opened. Yes, I did. I found them. All right. So let's pull these out. And again, I'm going to use my take your pick tool and I just use that putty end and push it and put that there and we'll just put another one right there. I usually do threes because we know in design odd numbers are more pleasing to the eye. So there's our little card and now all you have to do is slide your card in the hanger and you have a coordinating card and bag. Let's back this up a little bit. So you can t take some um, tissue paper, you get some of the shreddy stuff. If you wanted to, you could pinch this together. You could put your um, ribbon 
a different way. You could actually add a little magnet there. You could, there's all kinds of different ways you can make closures for this. Um, but it's a super cute little bag and I love it. And it worked out, you know, I, you know, you never know how things are gonna work out, but it did just fine. So that was our, this is the one we made tonight. And then here is the sample one that we made. Where's my card that was with it? Ah, I lost the card. Where did it go? There it is. So those are our two bags. So I think it worked out pretty well. I hope you like liked that project. And if you did, be sure to like it. It's going to be, I'm going to upload this over to Facebook. And so um, be sure if you haven't s subscribed to my YouTube channel, I would appreciate it if you did that. I am about 25 subscribers away from 100 subscribers on YouTube, which is like, you know, compared to big people who have, you know, 100,000 people following them um, or subscribe to their channels, you know, that's 100 seems like not a big deal, but for me, it's a big deal. And so I would love to get up to 100 um, YouTube subscribers before Christmas, uh, just a few days away, but let's see if we can do that. So share this video with your friends. Um, and if you, again, if you want to get on my uh, email list, uh, I will post the link for that. Here is the um, code for this month. You, when you place a $50 order, um, you, you will get a free gift from me, uh, an embellishment. Uh, this is the link to my directly to my shop, so you don't have to worry about making sure you find the right person. You got it right there. And if you would love to get your Stampin' products at a discount, don't have to sell a thing. You just get to order your products at a 20% discount minimum. You can earn uh, greater discounts, um, which is always fun. Uh, let me know. I would love to have you join my Smoky Mountain Stampers team and um, enjoy the the fun activities that we have. We, we like to have a good time. We can do some team retreats. We had a great team Christmas party recently and we're gonna have another one coming up soon, or not a Christmas party, but another team party coming up. We've got some fun stamping games to play. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. And um, we just have a great time. So I hope that you would join me if you would um, enjoy getting your products at a discount. So for now, I'm going to say good night and Oh, hopefully get in bed pretty soon. Um, we've got, this is the last week of school, the home stretch. So, you know, the kids are crazy. Everybody's crazy. Teachers are crazy. And so, um, trying to get all of that, um, done this week. In addition to Christmas coming up, it's been a little bit wild. Um, but I'm thankful for, um, all my customers. I am thankful for um, everybody who has supported my business this year. And I uh, hope that you will continue to do so and uh, let me know how I can help you as your demonstrator. I'll be glad to do whatever I can. And um, if I don't see you before then, I hope you have a Merry Christmas. Um, I hope you, if you are celebrating Hanukkah, I hope you have a Happy Hanukkah. I know y'all are in the middle of that, I think, right now. Um, but um, I will look forward to seeing you soon. I am gonna be posting some quick videos of uh, just a few simple card designs that I've got and uh, some other little little um, tips and tricks to uh, keep you going through the holidays. And I hope you guys have a great night and I will see you soon. Thank you.